Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and this video is probably part of a four part series on my new solar PV setup here in Worcestershire in the UK. So thanks for tuning in. So as I said in the intro, there's gonna be probably four videos. This first video, I'm gonna talk specifically about the solar PV system I'm going for here at my new house and the reasons why. Then part two will be the installation of the panels because that's happening a bit earlier as part of the um, garage build part three will be the installation of the inverter and the batteries and then part four will be kind of how the system performs everything so um like my previous videos if you watch them on the channel i do quite a bit of research and speak to a few different installers to kind of compare their prices uh, and if i think they're going to work out well for me so I did the same kind of process for this. I decided to go with a company called, um, I'll get the name here, GSM, Heating, Cooling and Renewables. Um, so a friend of mine, who you would have seen on the channel a few times in the past, Ed, he'd used them in the past for their install. I went with them for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, you know, Ed had used them and seemed that uh, they did a decent job. Um, second point was um, the cost was pretty competitive. Uh, in terms of you know cost comparisons across the other providers as well, but they also were quite confident they could get the DNO signed off uh, in time to make it so that the panels and stuff could be installed in line with the garage build. And actually, they got that done within well, less than 24 hours. So I sent it across at 2 p.m. on the one day, and then 8:40 a.m. in the morning they'd had the approval from the DNO to go ahead. So that was really really good. So in terms of what I'm having. I'm going for an in-roof system. The reason I've gone for in-roof is a couple of reasons. One, it's a brand new build. So obviously you can save some money on tiling costs. Secondly, I think aesthetically an in-roof system does look better than um, a, 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 an on-roof solution. Also, then you don't have to worry about any bird protection or anything. There's not gonna be any pigeons trying to live underneath them or anything. So that's another bit of a saving. The in-roof um, system itself does cost a little bit more than on-roof and um, I think it's slightly easier to clean. Obviously it's in line uh, with the tiles and where I've got them, it'd be easier to get up there with a brush and give them a clean every now and then if there's a bit of bird droppings on there. There are some negatives, obviously, as I mentioned before, negative is it does cost a little bit more money for an in-roof system, but you are saving the money on the tiles. I probably wouldn't go for in-roof if you already had a tiled roof, you wouldn't want to go to the expense of having all of the um, tiles removed to then put in. The other one is Obviously, solar panels work best uh, at a cooler temperature. And obviously with on-roof, you have ventilation underneath and with in-roof, you don't really have that. So I did lots of re research on that and reading different kind of reports and independent papers. And it seems in real life terms in the UK, you're gonna see about a 4% uh, performance drop of in-roof versus that a performance of on-roof. That's obviously got better ventilation. The only caveat I would say to that is, I don't know if those performance comparisons with the on-roof systems had bird protection, because obviously some of those bird protection things do reduce ventilation underneath as well to stop the animals getting under there. So I decided happy with a 4% drop and um, that'll be absolutely fine. A couple of things to be aware of for in-roof systems, obviously depending on the size of panel that you want, um, the in-roof, systems that are available are somewhat limited in that so i'm using the one that's most common the gse uh, in-roof system and again due to the size of the panels which we'll come to in a moment um, doing the half frame mounting system so this is the 1650 by 1135 that's the, the kind of grade on the gse website a few things to know about that as well when doing in-roof system, you have to be careful about uh, fire protection. So here in the UK, there is a requirement called BROOF, B-R-O-O-F, and then T4 is the UK version. There's a similar one for Germany and, and other countries. And that specifically talks about um, certain fire retardantness and how long, you know, if there was a, a fire issue uh, on the panels, how long those mounting systems would be able to provide coverage before it went into the building. 
Um, so that's something to be cons uh, considerate about. Uh, if you, you can use larger panels that haven't been fire tested for um, that in roof system, but you'd have to attach an additional fireproof membrane or something. So I'll pop a little thing up on the screen here um, for the GSE system. Some of the older GSE systems, if for some reason you install had old kit, uh, are only tested up to 400 watts per panel. Um, the ones that are slightly newer, up to 2022, could be rated up to 450 watt panels. And then the latest GSE system, the uh, 2023 range, um, they can support up to 600 watts per panel. So again, more than what you're gonna need. The, the biggest issue you're gonna have probably is the size of your roof and getting things to fit. I'm also gonna have them done in portrait as opposed to landscape. Again, just for the size of panels and everything, that's gonna work out um, absolutely fine. So that's gonna be the mounting system that goes on the roof. Then on top of that, I am going for 12 430 watt Jinko Tiger Neo N-Type all black mono panels. Now I'm going for those for a couple of reasons. They are in what I call the mid range brackets so similar to JA Solar and things like that. But from looking online, Jinko seem to have been around a long time. They seem to put a lot of money into R&D of their panels to increase performance, obviously how they operate, temperature and everything. Um, and similar to, to most of the other ones, they have a good um, warranty of the product. So 25 year product warranty for any defects or anything. And then a 30 year warranty on the performance output and uh, they're 21.77% uh, efficient, which is pretty good uh, for a solar panel. I think the sun power ones are slightly better than that, but you do pay a premium for the sun power ones. And I think they have a degradation of like, um, what was it? I think it was something stupid like 16% over 30 years. So they're still gonna be forming really well um, over that time, obviously, if you're keeping, keeping them clean and everything. So we're going for those. So I think they should look um, pretty smart and again like I said Jinko have been around for a long time I think they're one of the world's largest manufacturer of solar panels so not there's not too much to go wrong with a solar panel but they probably are going to be around in the future based on their products and I think they look um, pretty decent as well so then so there's 12 of those panels so that's 5.22 kilowatts of solar array on the roof um, and that's going to take up pretty much the whole of the south side of my roof so we'll see that in the next video when they actually get installed and then that's all going to connect back to a give energy system so going for the five kilowatt um, gen 3 uh, hybrid inverter so again i think uh, give energy been doing a good job um over recent years i think they had some teething issues to start with um and their, their warranties weren't as good as some of the others but now it's 12 year warranty and uh, i don't know if it can be extended or not something i'll look into once it's been done. Obviously in my previous house, I had um, Solar Edge. I like the Solar Edge because you've got all the optimized and everything so you can see specifically what each panel's doing. But I've really got hardly any um, shading on this roof. So I decided it wasn't worth paying the little bit extra um, to get Solar Edge because I'm pretty confident the Give Energy solution is gonna work really well. And then the reason for going for the hybrid inverter is I decided that I was going to go for give energy batteries as well. So I did look at a few different options for batteries. Obviously discounted the solar edge battery because um, I wasn't going solar edge. I think that's quite expensive. Discounted the Tesla Powerwall because um, I still think that whereas that used to be a good value for money in terms of um, pounds per kilowatt, not as good uh, in my opinion anymore. Uh, I looked at um, what are they called the the ones that you kind of rack and stack yourself, and you can like use Victron controls and stuff for that. But the price point for the Give Energies was pretty good when buying them as part of the installation, as opposed to buying them separately. So I'm going to get two 9.5 kilowatt Gen 2 Give Energy batteries. Um, so they have 12 year warranty as well, uh, unlimited cycles, and 100% depth of discharge. Comparing that to the Tesla, because I think you know, people mainly think of the Tesla Powerwall 2 as kind of the gold standard for home storage batteries. Um, the Tesla does have a five kilowatt rate of charge and discharge. Uh, in my experience, I don't think I've seen it charge much more than four, but definitely five kilowatt um, discharge. The Give Energy batteries 
can charge at 3.3 kilowatts, discharge at 3.6 kilowatts, and they also do have a backup feature, not for your whole house. Um, you can just have a few circuits on it, so lighting circuit and socket circuit, as long as that doesn't exceed 16 amps. So again, for me, I'm gonna have the new extension wired in to this for backup, not the whole of the house. Uh, but again, for most people, 3.6 kilowatt um, discharge is probably sufficient. You definitely need to juggle things a little bit if you're trying to stay off grid, if you were cooking with your oven and trying to boil a kettle and things as well, you might tip things over. But again, we'll see how things go in future videos in terms of how battery performance works. So that's pretty much it. Um, other thing to mention about the panels, actually, um, as we mentioned, the GSE in-roof system comes in different sizes. So if you have to adjust that for the panel size, with these particular Jinko Tiger Neo panels, whether you're getting the 420 watt version or the 440 watt version, they are all the same size in that performance bracket. So I think they're 1,762 millimeters high by uh, 1,134 millimeters wide. And you might be saying, well, why are you going for the 435 watt ones and not the 440 watt ones or, or something similar? And that is really just based on availability. I think they may also do a 460 watt one. I can't remember if that was the same size, but they're like rocking horse poopies. Um, difficult to get a hold of those ones. So the 435 seem to be the highest performing ones that are readily available. And I've been really missing solar for so long now. Looking forward to getting it installed and up and running. So I think I've covered the main reasons why I've gone for certain things, um, key points of it. Um, those GSE panels as well, if it's in, of interest to people, obviously, apart from the, the fire stuff, there's also wind uplift checks, which was another consideration. Obviously having on roof, you've got to give more consideration to wind shear. I think I mentioned that in the previous video. Um, uh, but they also do kind of earthquake tests and all sorts of rain tests and wind tests and everything and they all kind of pass your flying clothes GSE stuff's been around for a long time and all is kind of supported for all different uh, variables of pitches I think it's from like 15 degrees up to 60 degrees or something my roof 45 degrees pretty much bang on south facing um, and I think um, compared to my old system which was a nine kilowatt array with a six kilowatt inverter. I used to generate around eight megawatt hours a year. This system will probably generate around five kilowatts a year. It's about 31% drop uh, compared to what I had to before. But with the extra batteries and things, it's gonna be interesting to see um, how things work in the house moving forward. Also looking at looking at air to air for heat and cooling in some rooms, IR panels in some of the other ones. Really wanna get completely off of gas uh, over the next few years and be more kind of electrical renewables focus, some of that self-generated, some of that through um, Octopus Energy. And I will have a video on that as well. So obviously no longer on the fit tariff, whereas my old system was, I will, I will look to see if there's any export left, which again, there's lots of debates as to whether you should try and focus prioritize export because the money that you can generate and everything. Um, I still right now think about wanna maximize my consumptions of it, but I will be moving um, my Intelligent Octopus Go to be enabled to the Octopus outgoing fixed tariff where they will pay you 15 pence per kilowatt for anything you export. So see how see how that works, see what I think of it uh, when things come. If you've got any questions about what I'm going for, why I've gone for it, any feedback or anything, please feel free to leave that down in the comments and I'll look to respond back to that as well. If you're looking to move energy provider, as I always mentioned, consider Oxford's Energy. Been with them a long time, been a good company, good customer service. If you go with them, you get £50 credit to your bill, as do I. And stay tuned, probably next week, there will be part two of this, which will be um, GSM coming to install the solar panels in the in-roof system and we'll see how that goes and what I think of that. So take care of yourself and until next video, goodbye for now.